Marsha and Sylvia's Stonewall Monument equals history? Hey, it's Prince of Queens, and just a day or two ago, it was announced that the first monument to feature actual historical figures in front of the historic New York City bar named Stonewall will feature none other than two personally transvestite-identified individuals that I have made videos about in the past, Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera. Obviously, considering the way LGBTQ plus media and more general leftist media have depicted the early riots over the years, a lot of people are overjoyed about this. And some people were like freaking out and trying to like go for the exits, but the police have barricaded the whole thing. And Marsha says, you know what? Today is not the mother day. Today is the day that I say no to this bullshit. Like y'all are not going to continue to run us, to dictate what our lives should be like, to, 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 to dictate what our lives are supposed to be like. Then. So Marsha B. Johnson stood the f up and she picked up a shot glass and she smashed that against the mirror and said, I got my civil rights. She had had enough that mother day. Then. So Marsha says, ultimately, humanness wins. Yes. Ultimately, people win. Yeah. That night and then the next one constitute the Stonewall Riots, and that is what got the whole gay rights movement in America started off. It, it gives me chills. It's the shot glass heard around the world. Then. It was a lot, and she still faced it. But truly, black people deserve to be on all this Black people in Sacagawea, who needs to get off the goddamn coin and onto some <laughs> paper money. <laughs> because this is our shit. Yeah. Bow down. As you probably figured out, that clip came from Comedy Central's Drunk History, which is a comedy series. But of course, we're expected to believe that all of the information within it is entirely accurate. Problem is, it isn't, and I'll prove it in a moment, which is likely why the white male interviewer used a drunk black woman so that she would be held accountable for the narrative his show was pushing, maybe in case anybody ever called BS on it. I mean, seriously, does this look like a man that doesn't know he's up to something? He sure doesn't seem drunk. Right. But add in a queer identity and then a, a queer gender identity too, it was a lot. It was a lot. And she still faced it. But <laughs> oh God. And the tr Regardless, this narrative has been super popular ever since white gay men began being actively persecuted within the intersectional feminist dominated LGBTQ plus and greater cultural leftist demographic starting around 2014. Countless blogs have stated that Marsha threw the first shot glass and that Sylvia threw one of the first bottles, etc. And of course, doxing extraordinaire Cat Black, who was kind of like the poor man's counterpoints from a few years ago, was once hired by Everyday Feminism to make a propaganda video about this very factoid, so that it would reach every dedicated intersectional internet user. Because she was really popular. She screamed at the onlookers, why don't you do something, desperately wondering how clear acts of police brutality could go without uproar. From that point, the crowd erupted. Marsha P. Johnson is said to have been the first person to throw a shot glass at the police. Some Stonewall veterans refer to it as the shot glass heard around the world. Sylvia Rivera is said to have thrown a bottle at police officers. Actually, Kat, Sylvia herself said that she didn't just throw a bottle, but actually it was a Molotov cocktail. However, unfortunately for Kat, Comedy Central, and the other millions of people that swallowed that tale at face value, myself once included, the narrative that one unruly, angry black woman known as Marsha P. Johnson incited the Stonewall riot is entirely either an accident in some author's memory or probably, in many cases, an anti-male and anti-white fabrication. Here's what Marsha had to say. Marsha's the only one, mm. she, she's the only one everyone agrees was at the Stonewall riots. There were a lot of other people. But everyone agrees that Marsha was there, so... The way I, I winded up being at Stonewall that night 
I was having a party uptown, and we were all out there. And Miss Sylvia and Rivera and them were over in the park having a cocktail. I, I was uptown, and I didn't get downtown until about 2 o'clock, because when I got downtown, the place was already on fire, and it was a raid already. The riots had already started, and they said the police went in there and set the place on fire. Not only did Marcia claim that she had to actively find Sylvia after she learned about the riot taking place, but according to this historian, Yes, I am afraid that I could only conclude that Sylvia's account of her being there on the first night was a fabrication. Randy Wicker told me that Marsha P. Johnson, his roommate, told him that Sylvia was not at the Stonewall Inn at the outbreak of the riots as she had fallen asleep in Bryant Park after taking heroin. Marcia had gone up to Bryant Park, found her asleep, and woke her up to tell her about the riots. Playwright and early gay activist Doric Wilson also independently told me that Marcia Johnson had told him that Sylvia was not at the Stonewall riots. Sylvia also showed a real inconsistency in her accounts of the Stonewall riots. In one account, she claimed that the night the riots broke out was the first time that she had ever been at the Stonewall Inn. In another account, she said that she had been there many times. In one account, she said that she was there in drag, and in another account, she says that she was not in drag. She told Martin Duberman that she went to the Stonewall Inn the night the riots began to celebrate Marsha Johnson's birthday, but Marsha was born in August, not June. I also did not find one credible witness who saw her there on the first night. And so, clearly, there's nothing true about the narrative that trans women of color kicked off and led the Stonewall movement at all whatsoever. It's a lie and a rather dangerous one for gay men, who of course are told we are privileged while facing massive problems with suicide, drug addiction, sex addiction, and the highest STD rates in recorded history, thanks to Grinder and Prep, the one-a-day pill that allegedly prevents the transfer of HIV, at least when it actually manages to work. Another interesting thing that I've noticed when going through all of the reporting about the monument is that I have yet to find a single outlet outright repeating this blatant myth. It's as if they know that the narrative is untrue and they're just wanting to build the statue because maybe people will just continue to believe it was true based on the fact that there's a statue. So why are these two being pushed to the front? Well, I don't think it's a good idea for me to pretend to be a mind reader, but I still think it's fairly obvious. Intersectional feminists have an entire worldview around their hatred of white men. That's literally their starting point for absolutely everything they do or believe. As you can learn about in my video, intersectional feminism is communist particle board. For most of the last 50 years, the gay civil rights movement has been depicted as primarily being powered by gay men, and more specifically, white gay men for the most part. While this narrative does leave out a few figures like Sylvia Rivera and Marsha P. Johnson, who did participate in early activism with their transvestite-focused organization called STAR, the overall narrative was still centered around gay white men because, well, they got the most done by an absolute landslide. For example, the Madison Society, founded in 1950, is written in history as the first gay rights organization and was the brainchild of Harry Hay of the Radical Fairies fame, a white male. Every founding member were also white males. Now, this trend of leadership from white men within the gay community followed the exact same trajectorial pattern consistently until, of course, the AIDS crisis, when gay men were at an all-time weak point, and then of course, the lesbians began gentrifying and taking over everything they could ever since. And here's what Sylvia Rivera had to say about that. You mean you're talking about the gay community center? or Right, the gay community yeah. center, whatever they call it. Now, the lesbian uh -huh. gays, you know. I still call, I, to me there's only one word, it's gay. Lesbian, lesbians and gays, as far as in my book, you know, through all the years that I've been in the movement, I never, I've always had the respect for the lesbians and whatnot, but Randy, you and I both know that when the Stonewall Rebellion started, 
and the Stonewall riots started. There were no gay women that were arrested. And why lesbians have to be put in front of the word gay when we're all gay, then we might as well just start a whole new segment in our history and have everybody define drag queens. You know, it's, it, everything is lesbian and gay. And as far as I'm concerned, I don't believe that it should be that way. Would you? At this point, the entire LGBTQ plus has been taken over in leadership by intersectional feminism, and a huge percentage of the so-called queer women in the overall movement are heterosexual, from what I can tell, sometimes calling themselves non-binary, sometimes claiming to be a bit more bisexual than they really are, or maybe just pansexual. We've all run into them numerous times, even if we won't admit it. And of course, it should not be forgotten that during the Obama years, an obscene amount of attention and undoubtedly a lot of money was funneled directly into far leftist organizations that have their roots in the Communist Party of the United States, which had about 60,000 members at the end of World War II and never went away, but instead rebranded themselves during the Cold War and have been rebranding over and over since. Organizations like those associated with Black Lives Matter, most of the feminist organizations, and now most of the LGBTQ plus organizations, ended up almost unanimously bending the knee to the intersectional feminist cult, as blogs like Everyday Feminism clogged everybody's Facebook timelines non-stop from around 2012 through 2016, to the point where eventually the status quo of the left and the LGBTQ plus became white man bad, which of course included white gay men. And so, being that Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera weren't white and also weren't cisgender homosexual males, they made excellent revisionist poster children for this movement. You see, as we all know, not only did communists traditionally hate gay men, but the communist-rooted organizations all across the West are very heavily allied with Islamic radicals and receive a massive amount of funding from them, which is very important to know because while some Muslim sects are accepting of transsexualism, none of them are accepting of male homosexuality. But maybe most of all, perhaps these two are being pushed to the front because Sylvia was actually a Marxist, at least for a few years, as she was affiliated with the Young Lords, a Latino organization very similar to the Black Panthers, and so, in a lot of ways, this statue might as well be a communist monument, redwashing gay history right in the middle of New York City dishonoring our ancestors. Personally, I actually wouldn't mind if the two of them were given some monument, some where, but the problem we see here is very clear. We are dealing with people who see history as a weapon and have been fighting a shadow war since no later than 1919 when the Communist Party of the United States was formed. Due to their relatively small numbers and obvious lack of firepower as compared to capitalists in our nation, their biggest assets are social bullying to recruit more members and things like historical revisionism giving non-deserving credit to people who were either full-blown communists or who at least work well to make the contemporary communist intersectional feminist worldview look appealing. The sad fact of the matter is that within a few decades, if the monument is left as is and there's no other historical figures added, almost everybody will forget about all of these details that I'm mentioning and only the untrue narrative created during the Obama years will remain. Everybody who sees this statue will just assume that trans women of color led the movement that got gays and lesbians civil rights because everybody loved Barack and Michelle so much. I mean, Sylvia and Marsha. Mark Twain once said, the history of our race and each individual's experience are sown thick with evidence that a truth is not hard to kill and that a lie well told is immortal. 
Personally, I have to actually agree with him, as people are generally a lot more eager and dedicated to spreading misinformation and revisionism than they are to telling the truth. And so, if history is being used as a weapon, I say we start attempting to fight back by reasserting the truth and try to make it at least a small part of what we remember about our own community. I don't know, maybe you could add a few more important people to the monument, even if they are white gay males. That's all I have to say for this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider donating to me on PayPal or Subscribestar, and follow me on Minds and BitChute. Thanks a bunch.